amount of money for one man and what does he have up there for small children all the equipment and all the men that they have taken up on this mountain to prove a point has got to be more than two sawed off shotguns now if they tell us what that man has really done maybe we would change sides and go over there the sad thing is that we are paying for this and we can't stop it nobody can murder a 14 year old boy any adult in his right mind would never ever agitate a 14 year old boy into a mortal gunfight and justify it as right. There's just no way it can ever be justified as right in my book. I'm a father and I'm an American and I'm sick into my soul. Washington State was very distressed. He knew the marshal who was killed. He ought to be distressed. But he ought to be distressed at the authorities, the bureaucrats, okay, who, just like me lie, said they're in a free fire zone, waste them. <laughs> Sam had a right to life, and 13, too young. I'm William Rhodes, and we thank you for taking time out uh, from your uh, lives to watch this video. This is a, a tragedy here in the Northwest, and we feel like it's something that uh, everyone should be uh, informed about. Now, the national media chose to uh, uh, give out what I would call damage control reports, and they more or less contained the... Uh, uh, the white public by not uh, uh, letting the public know what was going on here. So they fulfilled their agenda, now we're going to fulfill our agenda for our people. Uh, I would like to say something at the beginning of this. Uh, uh, there were satellite trucks there for the entire 11 days. Uh, these trucks use big generators and they make a lot of noise. So uh, some of the uh, material that you're going to see there is generator noise in the background there's nothing that can be done about that we all had to more or less talk over the generators the reporters the federal government used generators and we also use generators uh, it was a night and day operation for 11 days up here and it's a a full-blown uh, tragedy for randy uh, for uh, kevin harris and randy weaver and his family we hope to bring you our side and not the government uh, uh, corporate uh, media backed version of this story. The language is rather explicit in, in only a couple of instances. There's uh, the old uh, phrase that a dam here or there might uh, be worth uh, uh, every blue moon uh, gets a point across. Well, there's a couple of chosen words in here and I just left them as is. So you might want to view the tape and then, and then later on have, uh, allow your children to watch it. Uh, lastly, I would like to say that this tape is not a, a uh, is not an endorsement for the Bogarts for President campaign, nor is it meant to detract from the campaign either. Uh, Mr. Greitz, uh, or Colonel Greitz, or Bo as we've come to know him here, uh, took time out from his campaign uh, in order to mediate in this uh, uh, terrible situation 
and he was able after 11 days this situation was resolved without further bloodshed uh, some of the comments made in here might offend some uh, others might have differing opinions uh, the Greitz campaign has its own agenda and this documentary is going to more or less show uh, the views of protesters and there were many and other citizens in this area who are who are and st still are outraged at this uh, r this ridiculous show of military power up here against an innocent man and his family and family friend uh, so uh, we appreciate Colonel Greitz coming up here and we uh, most of us will vote for him for president of the United States uh, but this tape is, although he is an integral part of this documentary, it is not an endorsement for the Greitz campaign. So we'll start from there on Friday, the, August the 21st, where this tragedy, uh, the day that it uh, opened uh, with the uh, shooting, uh, that, uh, the shooting uh, shootout that took place on uh, Weaver's Mountain. Naples, Idaho is a small town uh, it's in the uh, mountains of North Idaho, and on Friday, August the 21st, in this small town with loggers and uh, one general store, uh, five federal marshals went on to Randy Weaver's property. There was no sheriff. There were no white flags, no bullhorns, no sheriff, no papers. They went onto the property and proceeded to sneak up. Uh, the, one of the dogs, uh, one of the uh, Samuel's dogs, uh, was alerted to this and started barking. He was, the dog was shot by a marshal. Uh, as gunfire was apparently uh, exchanged, but we know this, as Randy, as uh, Samuel turned to run back uh, to his house. He was shot in the back through the spine and he uh, died instantly. Uh, Kevin Harris, the family friend, then proceeded to take uh, uh, Samuel to uh, an outhouse there. You can see the mountains uh, here in uh, North Idaho. That was one of the coldest nights. Maybe God was uh, working uh, uh, with some divine intervention here, but that was one of the coldest nights in the in, in recorded history for even Idaho on August the 21st. There was snow the next morning after on on the morning of August the 22nd and the 23rd up in the mountains. And these are the mountains that uh, Randy and the residents of Naples uh, live in, and one can sense the peace and tranquility here and the friendliness and and uh, spirit of cooperation between all uh, the people that live here. Uh, that is until the morning of August the uh, 22nd, because overnight the federal government moved in a, uh, a display of uh, military power here that, uh, that really threatened and terrorized the entire community, uh, and especially, of course, uh, the Weaver family. Naples will probably never be the same. The residents will never be the same. Uh, and as you will see, uh, protesters quickly gathered as the government started bringing in a, a show of force that was really uh, probably uh, uh, the likes of what Grenada or Panama uh, saw. There is a brief history to this uh, which uh, ought to be known, which brought this uh, thing, this confrontation, to a head almost immediately. Uh, some 20 odd months ago, Randy was uh, uh, framed up on a minor weapons charge by uh, federal agents. Uh, Randy had uh, previous to that refused to uh, be a mole, to be an infiltrator, to be a, uh, uh, an underground uh, agent for the feds uh, and to snitch on uh, fellow white uh, separatists here in the Northwest. Uh, Randy was so outraged that the federal government would do this to him that he uh, uh, took his wife and his family, who are very much in agreement with him, and they are a very tight family unit, and they went up to their house, their residence, their abode, where they 
uh, remained for the next uh, 18 months. Uh, Randy built their uh, house and uh, they've been uh, members of the community for many years. Uh, they're held in uh, good rapport by all the neighbors and uh, it is said that Randy is, is uh, kind and uh, generous to a fault. Uh, up on the mountain, they, uh, uh, the proof of this is that uh, during the 18 uh, months where Randy did not appear at his court date, he had openly said on the weapons charge there was a court appearance. He had openly said that the only way that he would come down, that his family would come down off of that mountain is if the federal government would openly apologize for intruding into their lives and uh, framing them up like that. Uh, they uh, remained on the mountain and proof that they were held in, they are held in good rapport in the community is that people, uh, friends of the family, brought uh, staples uh, up to the family. They uh, did not leave the mountain for 18 months. Uh, their, their home, they have spring water, they have a cow, and Randy, of course, is a former Green Beret, and they were, they're self-sufficient, very much in tune with the laws of nature. And, uh, uh, in fact, last December, uh, uh, his wife, Vicki, uh, gave birth to Elisheba, uh, who is now eight months old. And they didn't need to run up a $16,000 medical bill to, uh, to do this. So, uh, but anyway, they remained up on the mountain for the last 18 months. Most all of the residents in the community are aware of this and uh, are in very much in support of Randy. So uh, uh, this is what brought this thing to a head almost immediately when the government brought in a show of force that's really unparalleled. Randy uh, said about uh, eight months ago in a newspaper out here, the only interview that has been granted uh, during the past 18 months, even though there has been na uh, nationwide attention on this, Randy stated that the only way that they would come down the mountain if the federal government would not apologize to them, the only way they would come down is uh, dead. Uh, now, Randy had uh, fears about this uh, going back to 1985. I have a, uh, a letter written by Randy and signed and notarized uh, and it's, uh, it, with the Boundary County Courthouse, and I'd like to read a couple of excerpts of this un uncanny letter. This statement is a legal affidavit. We hereby make a public notice on this date that we believe our physical lives to be in jeopardy. We are the parents of three small children whose lives are also in danger. We are the victims of a smear campaign of our character and false accusations made against us to the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the United States Secret Service. My accusers hoped that the Federal Bureau of Investigation would, quote, rush my home with armed agents hoping I would feel the need to defend myself and thus be killed or arrested for, quote, assault on a federal official. This letter was written in 1985 and it uh, couldn't be any more accurate. It's almost as if uh, Randy could uh, see into the future. Uh, he is now charged with uh, assault on a federal official and we could say at this point that there that there were uh, 400 to 800 federal marshals on his property there is evidence of my innocence but they will continue to try to build an illegal case on a fraudulent accusation and fraudulent evidence because they don't like my political beliefs or religious faith now, this is some of the background information that has led to this scenario today where the Boundary County and, and uh, Bonner County were declared emergency areas by the governor of the state, uh, which allowed for the federal government to move in uh, National Guard troops and such. And there are a lot of protesters, as you will see throughout this thing, and Bro Grites uh, will do a much better job if you listen to him in his press conferences, he will explain what's going on.
by Sunday, there were, uh, admittedly by the Jews media, over 400 federal troops here. They had armored personnel carriers, uh, grenade launchers, rocket launchers, uh, helicopters, Sheridan light tanks. They seized off a 20, 20 square mile area and proceeded immediately to displace approximately 50 people off of their land. Uh, they had a tent city that they called Federal Way, and they even found time to play horseshoes uh, at taxpayers' expense, mind you. More federal troops were flown in by helicopter on Sunday, and the government realized that they were going to have to build a road up to uh, uh, Kevin's house, uh, and all this also at taxpayers' expense. On Sunday afternoon, the government started bringing in heavy road construction equipment in order to uh, build a road uh, suitable for their needs up to the uh, Weaver uh, residence. Oh, money's everything to these boys. Uh, you see any quality up there? Dump trucks full of sand, dump trucks full of gravel, Caterpillar heavy road construction equipment. Welcome to Russia. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, 
Leave the bright light there. Show me that other one that you got up there. Washington District of Cleveland. Religious Freedom Kills. Oh, excuse me. The, BIA, uh, the, the FBI excuse and the ATF me. take orders from the Constitution. Please listen to that, men. That's what you've taken a vow to do. Not from George Bush. Your Constitution, you took a vow to uphold that Constitution, and when you fail, you can be held in charge and possibly will be each one of you individually. Randy, who has never been convicted of a crime, his family and family friend Kevin Harris are about to become the victims of a massive million dollar a day military operation against them. On Friday, there were five or six marshals in camouflage caught trespassing without papers or the sheriff on the Weaver Mountain, one killed. By Sunday, there were 400 to 800 government agents and troops, U.S. Marshals, U.S. Border Patrol, U.S. FBI, National Guard, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, and various state agencies. Boundary and Bonner counties were declared extreme emergency and disaster areas by Governor, Governor Andrus. There were 20 square miles seized, 50 to 75 residents displaced, and a lot of very angry citizens and protesters. Everyone in the Northwest is familiar with the uh, government abuses of, of power against the uh, Gordon Call family in North Dakota and the, and the uh, case of Robert J. Matthews over on Whitby Island in Puget Sound. Protesters were carrying signs to this effect and very concerned for the Weavers. Randy Weaver was given. So we want to make sure he gets a chance just to come down off that hill with some insulation. He knows about Gordon Call. And in that case, there were two marshals that were killed there were people injured, Gordon Call's son. Randy Weaver is certainly, and his family are certainly familiar with the Gordon Call case of uh, North Dakota. Uh, Gordon Call and his family were provoked into a violent confrontation uh, at a, uh, a roadblock in North Dakota. Uh, Yuri Call, Gordon's son, was uh, uh, almost killed and subsequently was uh, uh, scapegoated and is now serving uh, two life sentences plus 15 years in prison. They used tanks on the Carl's property and later burned out Gordon Call, burned him up alive in his house in Arkansas. Uh, Gordon Call is a, is a World War II veteran and a grandfather and a great American. And Robert J. Matthews is another white Christian separatist who was burned alive in his house. Now all this activity shows you what sort of effort the FBI is putting into the case. They've made quite an effort here today. And with that story, we go to Jack Hammond. The FBI threw its considerable weight headlong into the standoff with Robert Matthews. Federal agents dressed in combat fatigues, armed with automatic weapons, rolled past roadblocks by the busload. The Federal Rallies uh, closed off Puget Sound in Washington and uh, brought in the Air Force, SWAT team, the FBI, uh, the whole nine yards and uh, proceeded to uh, use helicopters to launch uh, fire grenades into the house. And this is a tragedy for the white race also. They have lobbed in several canisters of tear gas and tear gas, as we know, is extremely flammable. The house is on fire. These are live pictures from Chopper 7. We don't know the cause of the fire, whether the tear gas was involved or not. And we do not know at this moment whether Matthews is still inside the house. We will have an update of that situation. As Robert Matthews burned alive when helicopters assaulted his house. A concerned citizen uh, shot this footage on August the 24th. That's Monday morning, four days into the siege. Uh, there's the Weaver house is in the center of the screen there, perched on top of the hill, which is on top of the mountain. Uh, the uh, telephoto lens brings this in. Uh, they were probably three miles or, or so away. There was a television crew, a local television crew, filming this next to them also. You will see the helicopter above, and although that seems to be a great white man's invention, it's being used against us. It was the thoughts of everyone that day that the government was going to end this standoff on Monday by firebombing the uh, house and just burning up, uh, burning alive Randy and, uh, the and his wife and the children. This is rare footage and should be a witness to anyone 
in the United States is concerned that the government is uh, is out of hand because this clearly shows that the government has uh, uh, lost its marbles to spend a million dollars a day uh, trying to take out a a man who has no 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 criminal record whatsoever. Uh, this is this is a uh, rare footage, and, and it has been said that were it not for the TV crew and the man that filmed this, unknown to us, that the uh, FBI and the and Washington might have given the uh, uh, go ahead to end this thing by burning alive then uh, Randy, his wife, and the uh, three children. There he is, he's right above it again. He probably brought him down the middle. Still circling. Cliff, can you get pictures of that? I've got lots of pictures of it. The intention is to drop diesel fuel on and burn the place down within a minute. that reporter just comment that the intention was to drop diesel fuel and burn the place down in a few minutes. to reporters or the people uh, uh, at the roadblock or protesters or anyone for that matter uh, was the fact that Samuel had been uh, uh, Randy's 13-year-old uh, boy was killed on Saturday in the initial gunfire. Uh, this information was withheld by Washington until the afternoon of Monday. Certainly. government seems to know no bounds and will uh, resort to anything to uh, take out uh, white people. The government does seem to be anti-white and this is uh, living proof of it right here. I wouldn't doubt there's some of them up behind us. Oh, I wouldn't doubt if they're white. Right here. Right the Weaver residence is right in the center of the screen and Randy and his wife have lived there for 18 have been up on top of the hill for 18 months uh, haven't bothered anyone Randy is an open white Christian separatist media station that filmed this uh, in Spokane has shelved uh, their footage of this. We're getting ours out just as soon as we can. This 
is home footage of, a, of an incredibly dangerous situation. A reporter was arrested two days later for attempting to obtain this uh, same sort of footage from an adjacent mountain. Uh, what Washington's plans were on this day, uh, I will never know now, but however, it is the general feelings of everyone in the community, particularly on this, the fourth day of the siege, that uh, the uh, government was going to end this, uh, this uh, standoff by uh, taking out the entire family. We'll never know at this point. Uh, the two reporters here are the one fellow that was doing the home video were about five miles from the protesters. Uh, this report came out of the newspaper a few days ago and uh, very seldom has the government gone on the defensive uh, in uh, a case of this magnitude. It's uh, a clear case that uh, there, there's trouble and uh, along with the citizen's arrest, which uh, was uh, given at the, at the roadblock uh, by uh, Colonel Bo Greitz, and that footage is coming up. Uh, but you'll see that there, there is a lot of uh, heat on the government out this way to, uh, to uh, explain uh, this situation and to show some accountability. The, the government appears to already be on the defensive by articles such as this one, uh, where it has been reported time and time again on, uh, by, the, uh, by the establishment media that Vicki was shot uh, through the door while holding the child uh, or the baby. Uh, they are quoted here as saying uh, something different, though, though they're saying they fired at the FBI helicopter, and that's when the FBI guy was given permission to open fire at occupants of the cabin. Well, this will all come out of the grand jury, but we can safely say that from this footage of the helicopter on Monday, it was uh, not fired at because the, it would have the uh, shots on uh, from one hilltop to the next, or uh, one mountain to the next, would clearly be uh, heard. So uh, <clears throat> the grand jury investigation on this, followed by the uh, a possible grand jury uh, to convene here in North Idaho, uh, based on the citizens' arrest, arrest made by the citizens here and along with uh, retired Colonel Bo Greitz will hopefully open up the uh, uh, the open up, open up the uh, avenues toward getting some accountability for this uh, 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 tragic situation. In the news there's been a lot of reference uh, to the Gordon Call and the Robert uh, Matthews uh, cases uh, so we ask uh, Kirk Lyons, uh, director of the Calls Foundation, about the similarities in these cases. Cases are similar because they follow a pattern of government overkill. Um, the government has a bad habit of calling in um, the army and everything that's except nuclear weapons to blast out so-called white supremacists off of mountaintops. And so the Weaver case is their usual government overreaction, which we see, and also the pattern of, of trying to burn out or, or, or firebomb um, people that are so-called white supremacists that are on uh, either fugitives or, or on top of a mountain. Uh, in the Matthews case, he died by fire. Uh, they firebombed the house. Uh, Gordon Call, they burned out the house he was in, and in this case here, apparently there was a helicopter that was going to drop, um, uh, you know, um, incendiaries on the house. So they follow a, a government pattern. I can see where people would relate this case back to the Matthews case and the Call case. He also asked Kirk about the Bivens Act and the possibility of, of uh, multiple lawsuits in this, uh, in this Weaver case. A Bivens action or holding the individual agents responsible is the best way to go in this case to basically put all federal agents on notice that if you go around killing people indiscriminately like this happened in the Weaver case, that you'll hopefully have the knowledge of a multi-million dollar judgment against these individual agents on your mind before you pull the trigger the next time. And also to keep these agents that pull the trigger on the Weaver family from ever serving in the capacity of law enforcement or in a position to carry a firearm and terrorize innocent people again. This gives us the power of civil discovery, which you would not have in, a, in the criminal case. So we can start putting these agents under oath get their deposition testimony, it will be an aid to the criminal defense. And as we get these agents to start pointing fingers at each other, we can start adding names to the lawsuit. And when they start pointing up towards the next echelon,
come on up, we can add that level. And then when that level starts pointing fingers further up, we can go all the way up. Eric Lyons is director of the Cause Foundation in North Carolina. They've uh, done a lot of work for white separatists and uh, Christian separatists over the years and also with other organizations. On Sunday, the feds wasted no time in charging Kevin Harris with the killing of the marshal from, uh, from Boston. Uh, on Monday, the FBI announced that they, uh, that uh, Samuel uh, had been killed in the initial gunfight on Friday. Samuel was shot in the back while fleeing. Uh, he was shot through the spine and died instantly. That was on August the 21st. The feds didn't announce this until uh, Monday afternoon, and there was a lot of uh, anguish, and of course, uh, uh, people are still wondering why the announcement was, was made uh, three days later. Uh, all this hopefully will come out again in the grand, grand jury investigations. We have some footage from that Monday afternoon given to us by someone else. Uh, and you can clearly hear the anguish uh, in the background of some of the uh, people there. But that's the way it went Monday and Tuesday. And the vigil continued right on until Wednesday and Thursday. Bo Gright showed up Wednesday. Uh, but we'll uh, take a look at this footage and then move into Wednesday when uh, Colonel Gright uh, showed up on the scene. This footage was provided to us. Uh, it's unsettling, and this was uh, right after the death of uh, Samuel was announced. Clearly, there was a lot of emotion and uh, sadness at this time. Samuel was well liked in the community. This truly does seem like a senseless murder, and there should be some federal accountability for this. Uh, one of Sammy's little friends will miss him very much. Your best buddy? Yeah. I like them a lot. Couldn't miss them I before. loved that family. Protesters came in all ages. The young, senior citizens, How's this all gonna end? What's gonna happen? and people of all ages, all shocked, angered, livid with rage at what is murder, pure and simple. Our taxpaying dollars may have never gone to such a debacle. If this is what it comes to, Northwesterners won't know part of the U.S. and its collapsing world order.
of you put dirt in their faces and watch them and their families cry. And you sat by and you drove the truck. You drove the truck. Walk away. Wipe the blood off your hands now. Stand up and be a man. Don't fight for a system of tyrants. Stand up for yourself. What you believe in for your people. If you believe in anything. One shred of decency is all it takes. Step out of the truck and go home. Most here were white separatists or, or uh, white Christian separatists. But everyone here was in agreement that this is an abuse of power probably unheard of in the history of the United States against this white Christian family. Everyone here was outraged. The vigil continued at night night and day all night long all day it was cold reporters slept out on the the ground uh, protesters white patriots every day and every night it continued we're gonna need to lift this up the various TV uh, stations did live shots at night. Uh, things just didn't quiet down at night. For 11 days this went on. Everyone was uh, deeply concerned, uh, to say the least, for the Weaver family at this point. there were menacing lights that shined out uh, that the uh, feds kept on the reporters and the protesters and sympathizers. Each and every night, these generators made noise and those lights were on. So it really was, was like a 24-hour activity. Go back up there, including a wider renter truck. We're not sure, we're not sure what exactly was inside that truck, but also some Humvees, also those, those uh, all-terrain vehicles that have replaced the Jeeps in the military. Uh, up on the mountain, sources have told us that the Weaver cabin is surrounded by federal agents and also surrounded by floodlights. Now, the FBI says, for the most part, the planning stage is over. I think they mean they were, they were letting some people up to their uh, homes today to, uh, to uh, feed their dogs or cats, that kind of thing, and they're pretty confident that, that, that things are pretty safe, and they have an awful lot of people up there, over a hundred agents that we know of. Each day, each morning started the same. Federal goons everywhere blocking the bridge across Ruby Creek. Protesters. People maintaining a, a vigil for the Weaver family. Vietnam veterans. truly a display of, of uh, white Christian unity that I've rarely seen around the United States.
Passers-by brought food, people on their vacations uh, that stopped by and spent part of their vacation here protesting. Uh, there was there was food, always uh, food uh, cooked by women over the grills. Everyone stuck together. Some times were quieter than others, but the nominal word here would be tension. Lots of tension and anger as this federal siege against Kevin Harris and Randy Weaver and his family continues day after day after day. Lots of frustration. Things slowed down towards the middle of the week up into Wednesday and Thursday when the siege was approaching it, approaching uh, being a week old. Everyone seemed to be uh, regrouping. Things were, as I say, calm, but, but very tense. There was always food. There was, uh, everybody pitched in. That is, except the federal dogs who we're paying to do this. They're supposed to be here, these men, to serve us, not us, them. They have Randy on a weapons charge. This goon here carries a weapon that was shorter than the one Randy was framed up with. There's no end to what this federal tyranny will do, not only here, but in Iraq, Panama, Grenada, anywhere and everywhere. This is a local pastor at a local church here. Can you wrap this up? Yep. Yeah. Okay. 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 Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. 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 The Constitution is what you're going to uphold. When you don't, there are going to be a citizen's arrest, and you people will start finding out that we do have a Constitution. Friday morning started out like every other morning at the Weaver property lately. There were two developments, though. There was a citizen's arrest, and we also got the sad news about Vicky's death. The citizen's arrest would come this morning, and the shocking news of yet another senseless murder at the hand of federal goons would soon sweep our nation. Vicki Weaver was the second victim of this military massacre here at Ruby Creek. The United States government. The people here already sensitized to the death of young Samuel We'll not learn about Vicki Weaver's death until late tonight, as, as will the rest of the nation. Listen very closely to the next little girl's comments. At 10 o'clock sharp, Colonel Bo Greitz and retired police officer Jack McLamb, author of, editor of Aid and Abet, present a citizen's arrest. Is there any agent here that represents Gene Glenn from the Federal Bureau of Investigation? Yes. Knowing that Gene Glenn is present on these premises, we as citizens of the United States 
and under the Constitution of the United States, do hereby present this citizen's arrest warrant for Gene Glenn. Federal order, citizen's warrant for citizen's arrest, pursuant to the Constitution of these United States of America and applicable laws thereunder, this citizen's warrant is herewith ordained and the citizen's arrest of the below named person is herewith ordered for the causes set forth here below. Gene Glenn, an individual. Cecil D. Andrus, an individual. Henry E. Hudson, an individual. William S. Sessions, an individual. The citizen's war uh, warrant for citizen's arrest is hereby deemed to be perfected. The arrest of the arrestee upon delivery of this federal order upon arrestee and knowing that uh, Gene Glenn is present on these premises and there are agents representing these other people named, then we deem this delivery of federal order as completed to the provisions herewith. Specific professional titles of arrestees, Gene Glenn, special agent in charge, located in Bonner County, Cecil D. Andrus, governor of the state of Idaho, located in Boise, Henry E. Hudson, director of the U.S. Marshal Service, located in Washington, D.C., William S. Sessions, director of Federal Bureau of Investigation, located in Washington, D.C. Causes alleged, arresters reserve the right of immediate and subsequent arrest pursuant to the charges named herein. Citizens warrant for citizens arrest. Murder of Sam Weaver, son of Randy Weaver, and U.S. Marshal William A. Deegan at Bonners Ferry, Idaho, pursuant to the intentional, willful, knowledgeable, contrived, direct or indirect, overt and or tacit, absolute and or related one, felonious abuse and cover-up of abuse of discretion of office through 12. We present these warrants of arrest as if they have been served to them with the witnesses that are here observing this service. We do it as if it were nailed to the door. We do it upon this bridge and we lock it in place with a stone. Do we have a disinterested citizen? Not Would you make the service, please? Bo, we need to make it over here to where the... Uh, it's going to be a while laying here. We don't want the cars to roll over it. Over here in the corner. Okay? Over here. Consider yourself served. Randy Weaver ran for sheriff several years back in Boundary County, and he said he would honor this get out of jail free card to each citizen one time the first time. He ran on a platform of enforcing only the laws of the people of the county wanted. Washington, that's near Seattle, uh, 40 miles out of Seattle in the suburb. I come over here, I couldn't stay away. Everybody I was talking to on the job, in town, in the bars, anywhere else, on in the store was talking about this. And eight out of ten of them were on Weaver's side. To the tune of, nobody can murder a 14-year-old boy. Uh, any adult in his right mind would never, ever agitate a 14-year-old boy into a mortal gunfight and justify it as right. There's just no way it can ever be justified as right in my book. I'm a father, and I'm an American, and I'm sick into my soul. They're going to put us down and keep us down. They're not going to let loose. When they can steal $400 trillion of our money and laugh at us and want us to pay it back and then kill us for it, something's got to be a different way. We should be able to negotiate it with these people. These are our employees. These aren't our lords and masters. These are our employees, paid, bought and paid for with our money. They're supposed to be here to protect and serve the national security of this country and its people, not kill us. That's what I believe. And uh, as far as this, this is wrong. And, 
and Bill Clinton or George Bush or one of them suckers ought to say something and be here. It's wrong to come to a man's own ground and do this. It'd be different if he went downtown. And, and if he went downtown and started some shit and tell it'd be different. I believe it's wrong, wrong, wrong. That's all I've got to say on the matter. The American family show true that. One thing I would like to know is when Reagan and Bush, the CIA director, was the vice president, Reagan was in charge, oh, four or five years ago, they passed a law that very few people know about called the Emergency Powers Act. I saw that. It's called in times of civil disorder or rioting or national nuclear catastrophe, they can suspend the Constitution of these United States and declare martial law nationwide and make concentration camps and arrests without cause. Now, since when has the Constitution of the United States ever been suspendable by anyone? That is, communism is wrong. We're going to subject to the fact that our taxpayers' dollars are being spent to kill this man and his family. And this is how they strengthen the American family with lead. I don't want no part of it. On Wednesday and Thursday, the federal government had uh, denied uh, Bo Greitz the opportunity of going up and talking with uh, Randy Weaver or to try to uh, open up some negotiations. Uh, on Friday, after the citizens' arrest, shortly thereafter, Bo Greitz did go up to the top of the mountain and was the first one in seven days to have any conversation with the Weaver family. Now he is returning off the mountain with a, uh, a lot of supporters and uh, uh, people that are very concerned at this point and we'll listen in to his uh, news conference there was some very shocking news from this and of course it uh, was reported immediately by the national media good job oh, this, this is, well, we all take back oh, one I step back we want this in stereo <laughs> <laughs> I want uh, all of you in the vigil to uh, join your hands I want you to get close and I want you to get warm I've got good news and I've got bad news. <clears throat> good news is this. We walked up there. We have absolute... Louder! Well, it, you know, it's not going to... Well, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. get, her, get, her, get her pretty close, Paul. The good news is that uh, we went right up to the top of the hill and established an immediate dialogue, like I knew we could, with Randy. Wasn't any problems at all. And uh, we had a full conversation out of him. And I think we're going to have this thing resolved in the near term. Now, we've canceled the talk because Randy, I think, would be a fool to think that we were going to try and do anything uh, as far as evacuation during the dark. But uh, tomorrow morning at first light, this communication is going to continue. I want your hands joined. That's an order. I got a reason for it. Now... There's some bad news. The bad news is, first of all, that Kevin was hit by a bullet on Friday, on Saturday. It uh, has incapacitated him, but he's well. I didn't talk to him, but uh, I was told by the girls, by Rachel, by Sarah, I was told by Randy that he's all right, that Yahweh is taking care of him, that he is alive and he's healthy. Bullet apparently went uh, through his arm, into his chest, uh, into his lung, broke a rib, but he's, uh, he's all right. Again, the communication was tough. Tomorrow I'm going to throw a bullhorn right through the window so that they can pick it up and we can talk because they wanted to reach out and get a telephone. It's about three feet from the door. It ain't, going to, it ain't never going to happen. The bad news, and get a grip on yourself, is that Vicky was killed. Oh, no. Damn. And uh, the most unfortunate thing, apparently she was killed on Saturday. Now, Rachel and Sarah, I want you to listen to what I gotta say so you get it right. Rachel and Sarah seem to be in high spirits. I didn't see them because they're in the interior of the house pretty well bunkered in. But they hollered out and said, Bo, we're okay. And uh, I talked to both of them. 
I had a good dialogue with Randy. The only thing that is shameful about this is this could have taken place three days ago. That's true. But it is do it is working now. And so God be praised. Amen. And the fact is those three girls up there, the three daughters, or I didn't get a chance, of course, to talk to the young one, but they're in good health. And Randy is in positive spirits. Now I have assured him that he has a loyal vigil, and that the reason why we're going to get this thing resolved is because you have been loyal in your prayers, Amen. and all over this nation, Amen. people are praying that God's will would be done in this. A wonderful woman, a pioneer woman, wonderful mother, uh, already taken has off. had her life taken, and she's in God's hands as we speak person, I think, is yet to be routed out. I think we might have arrested some of them today through our citizens' arrest because there's a bureaucrat up here that's guilty. The bureaucrat that's guilty is the one that allowed these people, and it may be a bureaucrat right here in your own midst. You see, that sheriff should have been up there. And uh, he very easily could have gone up and said, Randy, we got marshals, and I don't want you to get spooked. Somebody is going to be brought to the bar of justice. And I don't really think it's going to be one of these armed people. I believe we're going to find some fat bureaucrat that's going to be the one that authorized this to go down the way it did that led to the deaths now of three people. Our fathers may approach our throne tonight. We're thankful that some are left to lie. We pray again tonight. Your blessing upon them that are the girls. And um, our Father, we ask that you be with Kevin tonight and get him through. And then our Heavenly Father, we do ask, above all things else, that there be some justice brought upon those that are guilty for these murders and these things that have happened. Tonight, Lord, calm the spirits of these that are here that we might continue to walk and to pray and to wait until that morning hour when things can be resolved in a better hand. Lord, we're thankful again for your servant, for all be thy servants, even though for what has been accomplished here tonight. We give thee praise for this and your hand upon us and especially upon his mission that he did. We give thee the praise for his victory one more time of climbing one more hill. We ask you, Lord Jesus, that you would keep us through tonight, keep calmness here with each one, guide and protect us, help us to get word back to Randy over the, over the radio that even Bob might go as uh, editor there of the paper and get that uh, station open tonight so that he can hear it locally. Guide and direct us through the night and keep us in thy hand. Protect us. May God get the glory and we thank thee, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And you feel the strength as a woman of God. And you believe in your heart that together we stand. Put arm in arm together now. And you show everybody that we are women of Yah. And you will not let this come to pass again. Because we are the virtuous women. You are his enemy. And you will never receive us in your hands again. From our Savior, never will you take another woman down. Never. And may we die We're going to war! think is right, huh? This is right, isn't it? It's really right. You're proud to serve these fucking morons. They don't care if you die. 
They put you out here in front. You're nothing. You're fucking nothing. Don't fucking touch me. I ain't with you. Kevin and the girls and for little Sam. The Father guide us and help us. And lead us to save! Yahweh save! Yahweh save! Praise Yahweh! Arise, O Israel, it is time for war! To bind their kings with chains, and their nobles with fetters of iron! This honor have all his saints! Praise Yahweh! Praise Yahweh! Saturday morning brought no relief from the tent situation, the media, the sound, the trucks with generators, the noise, floodlights at night, protesters. It looked as though the citizens might find a way to put this situation into their own hands. Things just drug on and on with four to eight hundred federal troops still up on Randy's property and all the adjacent properties. Now there are, now Randy's wife is uh, gone, his only son Sam is gone. There is still much uh, grief and uh, frustration and I think that's uh, saying the least of it. So you got this one guy there with his dead wife and his mortally wounded friend and three little girls. One of them, I guess, is just a baby. And you got, a, I don't know how many hundred, uh, you got National Guard, you got the BATF uh, uh, troops. You have, uh, I don't know, as a Vietnam vet, combat vet, I find it bewildering. I just I think it's a sign that it could happen to anybody else. Uh. Well, I don't, they take, they're taking pictures of me. Maybe it'll happen to me. I don't know. But... Uh, it's not going to keep me away from being here. I'm glad I came. Uh, down here along the roadblock, as you can see behind me, there are some flowers that were placed along the roadblock last night. Those flowers are for Vicki Weaver. Of course, the war came down last night that she had been killed by a bullet that had gone through the cabin, killed by a single shot, the same shot apparently, that also somehow deflected off and then hit Kevin Harris in the arm and then eventually into his torso, breaking one of his ribs. We're told that the conversations Bo Wright's had last night were exclusively with Randy Weaver and the children. He was not able to speak with Karen Harris because of the injuries that Harris sustained when he was struck with that bullet. But again, the latest from this morning, Bo Wright's has gone up to the mountain to try to talk to Randy Weaver. You're looking at uh, Vicky's parents, that is uh, Sarah and Rachel's grandparents. And this is, of course, a tragic... Uh, a death for them. They're here from Iowa. And they're uh, bereaved at this moment, just like everyone else out here. Uh, even the news media, uh, the local media, that is, because there was a national blackout on this. The, the local media uh, did cover this story uh, night and day, but the national media, in conjunction with the corporations and the banks, kept this from the from the white public. Here you can see BATF uh, feds walking through the woods just on the other side of Ruby Creek. This is Kevin Harris's parents, his mother and stepfather, and Miss Harris who once said that her her son was, uh, his views were ugly, as she put it. Now she mistrusts the government. Meanwhile, the siege against this white Christian family continues into its ninth day. With, with it seemed at this time little hope for, for anyone uh, involved. Uh, Nothing has unified so many people against this uh, tyrannical uh, beast that we uh, call Washington, D.C.
check on my kids, but I've got to find out what's going on. Comment would be superfluous. Mrs. John Trockman, who was a, a good, a very close friend of, uh, of Vicki Weaver, uh, it continues her uh, her cooking, although she's very upset, as is everybody else. But Vicki Weaver was one of her closest friends. We're all white Christian separatists here. And uh, it's a very tough situation for John Trockman and his wife. I love the kids. I love Randy. Hey, George. I'm proud of the stand they've taken. If I could have been up there, I'd have been right up there on the mountain next to them. For the first time Saturday afternoon, Colonel Wrights comes back down the hill for a press conference. That was the first one of the day. Thank you. Thank you. You run down a briefing on the events that happened because uh, Randy was wounded also. Uh, we didn't realize that, but uh, on Saturday, apparently here's what happened. On Friday, as we had suspected, uh, the dogs got excited and ran down having detected that there was movement. Well, Sammy uh, hollered that the dog didn't, they thought it might be a deer, so the dogs were chasing something. And so uh, Sammy uh, had a rifle, a 30 out six, and uh, Randy uh, had a shotgun, a 12 gauge, and uh, his uh, friend Kevin had a mini M14. So they went in the direction that the dogs were barking. And uh, the two others, meaning Kevin and uh, Sammy, they stuck to the woods and Randy used the logging road that's up here. Randy ran onto a camouflaged figure, he said, that said, uh, freeze. And Randy at that point turned around and started running back up the road. He yelled to Kevin, and to Sam to go home. Now, at that point, uh, apparently, there were other people in the woods. According to Kevin, another camouflage figure then shot the dog, at which time uh, Sam screamed out, you know, you have shot our dog. And at that point, Sam was himself shot in the arm. Sam turned around and uh, uh, made an exclamation. Kevin was with him and started to run down the road. He was ahead of Kevin, at which time Sam was shot in the lower back uh, by a bullet, they think it was a 223 caliber, and he was killed and died there in the road. Kevin, uh, seeing, said that he had checked the pulse and could find no pulse. He went on back to the cabin. Now, this all happened on Friday. They, meaning all of them, uh, Vicki and uh, Kevin and Randy, came down the road that night and without interference picked up Sam's body and brought it back and prepared it, washed it, wrapped it in a sheet and placed it in an outbuilding close to the house. The story that there was a rifle there he says it's absolutely fabricated and wrong. He said he now has uh, Sammy's 30 6 rifle, that they did not leave any rifle there. They left the body wrapped in a sheet. Now, they went out on Saturday because the dogs that were not shot began to alert again. This is Saturday morning. They went out and Randy said to me that he went to the shed to say goodbye to his son. He said as he reached up with his right hand to unlatch the door to the shed, a bullet uh, went through his arm and exited out his armpit. He said that he turned around and exclaimed uh, to 
uh, Kevin to get back into the house. As they were running back into the house, uh, Vicki opened the door, was holding the baby in her arms, saying to come in, come in. Kevin was in the lead. As Kevin started to enter the house, a bullet uh, struck Vicki in the head, doing massive damage uh, to her head and killing her instantly. Randy said she dropped to the floor immediately dead and the baby was not injured, even though the baby was in her arms at the time. That bone fragments and bullet fragments, then multiple fragments, they think it's the same bullet that entered uh, Vicky's head. Those fragments also entered Kevin's right arm and caused multiple small injuries. One major fragment entered above his right breast and they thought it might have collapsed a lung and broken a rib. But they gave, the doctors are up there, and they gave me a list of questions. And uh, Randy was very detailed. He's using cayenne pepper. He's using other naturopathic means. He described all of the symptoms. The swelling, he said, was extremely difficult in the first days. But now the swelling has completely subsided. Himself, he's fine. But they were taking care of, of Kevin. We talked to Kevin. Uh, Kevin shows by his lung power that uh, his lungs seem to be all right because while they won't open the doors to receive any kind of communication device, fearing that there might be something else other than communication, the fact is that they are, they are up close to the wall and we are able, and Jackie was able, and Chuck the minister was able to communicate freely without a bullhorn uh, to them. There has been a long dialogue. They read us a statement. They're very at at uh, not eight days into the siege, this was the first statement on Randy's uh, behalf. It was given to uh, Pastor Chuck Salen uh, at the Baptist Church in Naples. Time, the first communications that we had, Randy said, this is what happened. And as Randy started to say what happened, I noticed that he was reading this particular uh, diary that he had written concerning the killing. So. I said, I hollered at Randy. I hollered so loud that I startled Randy. And he shut up, and he didn't know what that holler was. And I, because I yelled, Amen. I said, Randy, I want that. I said, we've got to get that out so that we can prove what the feds have done to you. And so as I yelled at, he started to read again. And I said, wait one moment. And I took my pen and uh, my notebook that I had with me, and I told Randy I wanted it word for word as to what it was so that it couldn't be obliterated should something happen between then and the end of which we didn't know would happen at that time. He read it to me and I took it down as fast as I could in shorthand, had him having to stop him many times to, in order to be able to keep up with the, uh, with the report. And this, of course, is when we knew who shot who and how the situation uh, was for the first time since it started when, they, when the marshal's team went in and I believe, and that's my personal belief, and it always will be my personal belief, they went in there to annihilate and to kill and to wipe out that entire family so there'd be no evidence against them. So uh, I got Randy Weaver's uh, testimony at that time, verbally, through the wall, had uh, jotted it down, and uh, then when we got done, I shouted several times at, uh, how great it was, that uh, appreciative I was that Randy had uh, given us that. Pastor Sandelin also commented on the uh, uh, bullet that uh, uh, killed uh, Vicki Weaver. And uh, Bo said, I'm going to throw this through the window. And Randy said, no, don't put anything through any window and don't touch the door. Because we asked him once if he wanted the package placed at the door or put in. He says, don't touch that blank door. That, of course, was the door that uh, Vicki had opened with her baby in her arms to let them back in when the sniper had shot uh, Randy in the arm when he was trying to look at his uh, the last look at the birthing house at his dead son, Sammy. And of course, as he was shot and ran for the house and Vicky was standing at that door, that was the bullet that blew her head off and uh, killed, a, killed her there with her baby in her arms. So, and it was also the same bullet of a large caliber type that for the hole was approximately, I'd say, over half inch in diameter that went through her head and part of the bone and bullet went into the arm and uh, broke the rib of Kevin Harris. 
and uh, of course almost collapsed the lung. He almost lost that arm because of that. But uh, so Randy didn't want us to touch that door. When we left, uh, he was making such statements as, uh, well, we're not ready right now. And we wanted a communication device inside the house. And he says, well, not right now. When we talked about uh, Vicky's body being removed, he said, my daughters aren't ready for it just yet. And the last thing and the most encouraging thing that I got was he said, Bo, we're going to have to pray on this matter. We're going to need maybe a day or so. To me, that was very encouraging. Mm -hmm. The fact is that he was very willing to talk and we know now the state of health of all the babies in fine shape the daughters are very focused for all that's gone on and so i believe that an essence to this if in all honesty if you try to get it right an essence is we have a family who may not have abided by the exact letter of the law meaning randy did not come down in february for his court appearance but we have a bureaucracy that Randy's concerned about, and he's lost faith with that bureaucracy, that means you can't get a fair trial. He says he was set up on this BATF charge. And I believe that the wrongful deaths up there are not attributable, because I think he's telling he's very detailed with the truth. I think he's telling us the truth. The wrongful deaths up there are not uh, because of criminal action that he's committed. There hasn't been one bullet that has gone out since it was Sammy that fired the rifle when he saw, and so apparently Sam, the boy, killed the marshal who was shooting the dog. And after he shot the dog, Sam made the exclamation, fired his rifle, then he was hit, he made an exclamation, he turned around, started to run, and was shot in the back. So since then, there has not been any outgoing fire. The fire apparently has been incoming on Saturday, and it apparently was one of the people up there, uh, they, for lack of a better term, a sniper, with one bullet is very unfortunate. Uh, she was holding the door open, and that's, that's where it happened. So would you just briefly go over the chronology uh, of the gunshots uh, that, you, that you went over earlier for those of us who were having a problem? Uh, uh, okay, very, very quick on the gunshot we went on, on Friday. It was a gunshot that, the second gunshot was Sam screaming at the marshal saying, you shot my dog. The third gunshot was from obviously because that may have been the gunshot that killed Egan. The third gunshot apparently hit uh, him. Now, Randy said there were many shots being fired all over the place. And so I know when you get six guys up there with guns and there is shooting, everybody thinks that somebody's in front of them so there's a lot of gunfire. It's pretty spooky. But one, I'm talking about the bullets that count. One bullet hit him in the arm. Hit who? He hit uh, uh, Sammy in the arm. He turned. He said, oh, shit. That's the exact quote that uh, Randy said. He said, let's go home. And at that point, uh, he passed uh, his friend up there, the Harris boy. And then he was hit in the back. Harris caught up with him. When he fell on the ground, he said he knelt down beside him that he was dead, and so he ran on toward the house. The next shots that <laughs> counted were on Saturday as Randy was undoing the latch to the out area where he had uh, Sam wrapped in a sheet. A bullet uh, went through his arm. Uh, he exclaimed to get back in the house. As they started back in the house, apparently another bullet uh, was fired which uh, entered the head of Vicky and took her life and the bullet fragments then uh, entered uh, the body and have committed well, some what is not serious that look like now uh, of, of the Harris boy and so all the girls and everything else seem to be in good health they stayed in the house throughout the, the ordeal. What's the explanation for the good shooting on Saturday? The explanation for the shooting on Saturday you'd have to ask the containment people it, it's not I had talked to, uh, to Glenn up here and I asked them I said please don't have anybody on the top of that hill that had anything to do with this incident and he said Bo we have an FBI team now that is on top of that hill that is sterilizing that area and it's a defensive team to keep that area tranquil he said there's nobody up there that has anything to do so I don't know if it was FBI or if it were marshals 
or who actually did the shooting on Saturday, that'd be something for you to ask uh, Chief Agent Glenn. But the FBI knew that Vicky was shot Saturday. The, I don't think they did. You see, when some, and apparently, I guess when the, when the thing occurred, uh, they probably, I don't know this, but the door was closed almost immediately because Randy said, I'm not opening this door again. The last time the door was opened, we saw what happened. And uh, so the FBI didn't indicate to me at all. It was a great shocker. Yesterday, when it was disclosed that his bride had been killed, I asked the FBI tactical leader who was standing behind the tank, I said, did anything happen on Saturday that could have resulted in that? And he said, yes. And uh, when we got back down to the bottom of the, of, to the tent city at the CP, uh, Chief Agent Glenn, when I talked to him about it, he was very surprised, very disappointed but uh, they did say, yes, there, was, there were gunshots fired uh, on Saturday from the outside as, they, uh, as the team apparently approached, not only was FBI or who it was, approached uh, the, the home area. And they caught uh, Randy and they caught uh, the Harris boy outside. Where is he? One of the uh, marshals uh, was shocked at the uh, public show of support. Uh, did you expect this much of a response from uh, from the public? Were they expecting some? Uh, or is this yes a and no. more yeah. than they thought they were going to have? No, no, I live in Spokane, so... Yeah, me too. I, I, yeah, I expected some response. Uh, yeah. The scope of the response? Yeah, was it more... They're breaking out. That, that's kind of eye-opening. That they could target anyone here as their next family. Do you believe it's a case of religious persecution because of Randy's white Christian views? Absolutely. Absolutely. Jackie and Tony Brown are also close neighbors of the Weavers. Uh, they're good friends and Jackie was one of only three during the 11-day standoff to talk to the Weaver family. That is along with Pastor Sandalin and, of course, uh, Colonel Greitz. Uh, Jackie will be seen here coming down uh, from her trip up to the Weavers, bringing uh, vegetables from the garden of the Weavers to share with the uh, sympathizers and citizens uh, for dinner that, this evening, Saturday evening. Jackie will be the uh, guardian of the uh, children as soon as they return from Iowa. Uh, this is the wishes of the Weaver family, and uh, uh, that's how shows how close that Jackie and her husband are to the uh, Weaver family. Uh, of course, they're in a state of deep shock, and Jackie is uh, in a state of grief as just like everybody else at this moment. But she was very close to Vicki Weaver. My husband to the car. I'll be back in a few minutes. No, no question. Pastor Sandalin uh, recounts the rapport between Jackie and the girls at the Weaver cabin up on the mountain, even though it was surrounded by APCs and four to 500 troops. We then talked for a little bit. Uh, Jackie was then asked to come up because just Bogarts and myself had gotten next to the cabin, and then when we saw the, br the breakdown of the communication, Bo had asked if Jackie would, uh, if the if he asked the girls, he says, girls, would you like to talk to Jackie? And of course, Sarah yelled out, yes, she would. And so when Jackie, we, they, they, they went, then went back behind the area, down around the, the curve there of the, uh, where the road goes, uh, and they brought Jackie up, and when Jackie started talking, why, it was just absolutely, uh, a breakthrough that where there was no other type of a breakthrough because she having been up there every week and having been such a close friend of the weavers why she uh she had a real report a real report with the girls, with the girls. oh yeah the yes she did have a report oh with the girls. yes uh, real good and they talked for a long time and she the girl says tell uh, grandma and grandpa that we love them and that not to be angry at us and not to be mad at us because uh, I guess that uh, they had not had the same type of feelings at all concerning uh, 
Randy's situation and his stand in this area, and of course them being in the East, uh, Middle East didn't know or understand the type of a situation here. So they said, uh, tell them that, and of course when Jackie and we had gone down, we met with the family back of the bridge, uh, and when we had met with the family and told them the situation and how the things were, with uh, there was much tears, much crying, because as, they, as you know, uh, Vicky's body had been under the table in the kitchen for some length of time at that time. And Jackie went back up on to the cabin on Sunday morning and helped uh, Colonel Bo Greitz uh, remove Vicky's body. Okay, I want to ask you also, uh, when you went up Sunday, or was it Saturday or Sunday that Vicky's... Saturday. Uh, Saturday? We removed oh. Vicky's body on Saturday. What were the... The, the state of mind of the, chil the uh, children, I guess Sarah was actually a young Mormon, a teenager, but, mm -hmm. but the, uh, how was something like that? Uh, having a mother and their own mother there for ten, for nine days, I guess, at that point. Uh, well, you know, there's, there's one point I want to make really clear, and that is I witnessed a lot of miracles, I believe, during this siege. One of them was that there was no odor in the house, none. And you're talking about a woman that had been dead long enough for the body to rot, basically. There was no odor in that house. I consider that a miracle. Um, as far as the girl's behavior, no, nothing the Creator decides to do can be unusual. But anyway, um, the girls. the girls, of course, they were emotional. Their mother was dead, and, and we had to stir those emotions by recovering and, and better covering the body. I mean, they had her covered very well. She wasn't all out in the open for everyone to see, but um, removing their mother's body brought back a lot of emotion. I mean, um, something they would probably not had to really deal with as far as going in and seeing the body and they hadn't had to do that. Um, they were upset, of course, but we're talking about exceptional children. Um, they were in no way hysterical. They were in no way off the deep end. Um, this is what happens when the government frames up innocent people. Sunday morning, August the 30th would, would have been just another beautiful day at Ruby Creek in North Idaho, except this was the 10th day of, of this standoff. Once again, reporters gathered uh, protesters, sympathizers, and once again, Bo comes up to Ruby Creek, to the police line, and will attempt uh, to uh, get uh, Randy Weaver to sur and Kevin Harris to uh, surrender today. This is the, the tenth day of the standoff. Bo Greitz and Jack McLamb walking across the bridge across uh, Ruby Creek, heading back up to Randy's Mountain House on Sunday morning. And once again, uh, Jackie Brown is heading back up the mountain also. Only this time, she's going to the Weavers surrounded by a massive military operation and to remove the uh, body of her uh, <clears throat> one of her best friends Vicki Weaver the feds it's just another day
Sunday afternoon, uh, it was uh, suddenly announced that Kevin Harris uh, had had surrendered due to his medical problem. Base camp. He was treated in the cabin. Now he's being treated at the base camp. He's been taken to a Spokane hospital. Um, and that was basically what the top on this board. They're optimistic. It can be resolved today. The negotiations continue. The FBI believes Vicky's body is still in the house. Where's the girls? Still in the house. Where's Randy? Where's Randy? I gotta get on the air here. Where's Randy? Still in the house. Still in the house. We were up for medical. We didn't take Randy out for medical. Randy had suffered a uh, gunshot wound to the chest and his arm, and for he for ten days had been inside uh, the Weaver's home. Uh, he was flown immediately to uh, Spokane. Uh, Sacred Heart Hospital uh, by helicopter along with uh, Jack McLamb. That was part of the previous negotiations. Uh, Mr. McLamb uh, went uh, with Ke uh, Kevin and the helicopter just, it probably already left uh, 20 minutes ago and we're just now finding out about it. That's how difficult it was to find out what was going on there. Are they going to press charges against him? The media was uh, certainly buzzing with activity, as, as was everybody. This uh, uh, definitely uh, changed things, and, uh, and some, I will say, for some, I believe uh, some felt that it changed for the worse. Uh, we'll, we'll see in due time. <laughs> On uh, uh, Sunday night, uh, Bo Greitz came back down from the Weaver House uh, at about, uh, I'm estimating, about 11 o'clock, maybe, 10 o'clock, something like that. And so we were at this point anticipating uh, what the news was with the uh, Weavers, and uh, we were also anticipating any, any updates on uh, the condition of Kevin Harris. Real good news. Good news. I do. Uh, news. I do appreciate you listening because my voice is getting a little bit hoarse. Okay. Uh, well, I, Hallelujah. I've been speaking up for the last few days. <laughs> That's the problem. The good news is, of course, and all of you know that uh, we had anticipated a major uh, breakthrough, and uh, it was just that. Randall said he needed to pray about what he needed to do, that Yahweh would show him the way. And uh, sure enough, he prayed overnight when we got there this morning. Uh, there hasn't been any kind, it's been absolute trust uh, since, uh, actually since we went up there and got out of the tank. Uh, today we were sitting in the house with him. Uh, we opened the door, we were holding the baby. Uh, we were hugging the kids, uh, we brought in some water, and of course, uh, I guess the first thing is on, on Kevin. Uh, Kevin, uh, we're worried about Kevin's arm, and I'll give you a medical report. The doctor, we were very concerned, as you know, last night, and so we were able to get Kevin out. We, uh, Jack and I, carried him down on a litter and uh, carried him uh, down to where they had a triage. There's a couple of doctors. They looked at him very carefully. His chest wound is okay, but his arm was still bleeding uh, very bad, and the doctor said he uh, had some concern maybe about Kevin's arm. Doesn't know because this was just a preliminary. So they put Kevin uh, in the helicopter and uh, flew him directly to the hospital. Uh, he said today that uh, he wanted, if Kevin were to come out, and we were to be able to, because Randy was very worried about him, because Kevin's color was very jaundiced, and he was very weak. And Randy uh, realized that, that Kevin is key to this, because Kevin is the only eyewitness. So after that was over, I called Jackie up. She's the closest person, I believe, with the, with the girls. And uh, Jackie is just, she's a pioneer woman. She's strong. Uh, she's, her heart is just really soft for those babies, but she is a, a wonderfully strong woman. I knew she could help me uh, to bring Vicki out.
So we went up. Uh, it just take a long time to do all this. We went up, back up to the house. We went in. We talked with Randall and the girls for about an hour, and then uh, we we used a uh, we used a, a very professional uh, type container. It had handles, and it was it was it was very well to uh, to go ahead and put Vicky in. She was in the kitchen, and uh, then. Uh, Jackie helped me to bring her down the steps and down the hill. Did you cleanse her body? Well, her body had already been cleansed uh, by by the girls uh, up there, and uh, we had all we had anticipated. And the FBI gave us a uh, the linen, and they gave us a very uh, very. I, I'm used to army stuff. They gave us a very nice container. At any rate, uh, Jackie helped me carry it down to the bottom, and uh, she did a wonderful job. And she went on because she said that she had promised that she would go and, and stay with uh, with Vicky, and so she did. And then uh, we went on back up to the top of the hill, and uh, uh, Jackie, at that time, we just left Vicky there, and uh, we got, the FBI gave us water and containers because uh, Randall was just about out of water, and we didn't want to use uh, anything that he had, and so we took our own water back up, and uh, Jackie, Really did a wonderful job. By the way, uh, Randall said give you a special hug, and I said I already had. But uh, uh, Jackie was just wonderful. She cleaned the whole uh, area, uh, just spick and span. Is Jackie here? And no, she's not. No, she did a wonderful job. She cleaned she up the whole area, job. and uh, it's then a hard job. then she left, and we uh, Jack and I went back up. At any rate, I think that. Uh, that Randall has made some very good decisions. The girls, as hard as it is, you can imagine, the girls, as hard as it is, uh, their their spirits are strong, their hearts are stout. We had uh, long conversations, hours a day, uh, with, with Randall. The FBI has completely pulled back. We asked them to remove the tank, and so they backed the tank out. The robot uh, is still bothering uh, Randall, and so uh, tomorrow morning, but it was getting too late, Tomorrow morning, uh, I'm going to go up there and take that robot apart myself and, and move it completely out. They're just they're moving back. That stupid robot, because it's got a shotgun on it. The shotgun isn't loaded, but the robot comes with everything. Cameras, telephone, uh, gumball machine, it's R2-D2, uh, plus more besides. But there's a shotgun that's right there by the telephone. So when, uh, when Randall looked out and he saw it, he said, uh-huh, pick up the phone, right. <laughs> so, that, and uh, today they were still worried. Uh, a little Rachel peeked out of the corner, and, and this light is on. They've got this weird light, and it hums. She says it's still alive out there. See, they ran over the umbilical cord yesterday, but the doctors uh, operated on it and, and uh, survived. Oh, I personally am going to move that robot completely out. The tanks are going. When we found out the uh, logistics of this military operation on this man's property. Well, the logistics, that's an interesting question. Uh, Who will release that? Oh, well, I think you would have to ask the, uh, the FBI. They're the, but see, this thing is a multi, multi agency, National Guard, uh, you probably are looking at uh, at a million dollars a day uh, of American taxpayer money uh, that could probably be expended in other areas. On Monday morning, the 11th day of the siege, it did end, and uh, Randy Weaver was flown immediately to uh, Boise. The girls were flown to Iowa, and of course, the, his uh, wife is dead, and the uh, and the young son is dead, and his uh, house is uh, now sitting there empty. This was the news conference I'm more of, in those folks on the 11th day of the siege. It's over. Of course it's over. Didn't I tell you at 1230? How'd you get out? No oh, ye of little faith. How'd you get them out? Anybody in the vigil, I want you to get priority. I, a lot of thanks go to you. I know that you're there. Come on in close. I am. The, uh, well, all right. Can you shout loud? We've been here too yeah. long, huh? The situation is over because uh, all of the family are out and they're all safe. Amen. And uh, just two things really to say. One is the glory goes to God Almighty, literally, and I mean it. And if the media doesn't use it, then you're everything that Randall thought you were. And that is that everything we prayed for, and that's 
why I wanted this vigil, to hear this. Everything we prayed for, we got. Des Griffiths knows that I got up at 2.30 this morning. I had a vision last night at 2.30 exactly how this thing would go down. We went up there, I explained that to Randall, and by gosh, uh, I think I said 12 o'clock. But I was just about, oh, 15 minutes off, and it may be that my watch is not in correct solar time. But I explained that to Randall, and it was his, uh, it was his decision. But the glory does go to God Almighty. It shows you the power of prayer. Secondly, it's mission accomplished because there's no more harm done other than it was done on that very fateful Friday and Saturday. I want to say this. The government learned something here. I think the government learned that there are times when common sense pays off. It doesn't have to be in a book of procedure. And so you know what happened. We had to make a citizen's arrest to get their attention. But I knew from the very beginning that there are some things, uh, well, I would say that it's only that and only amateurs think they can do as well as professionals. But those guys are really professional. Everybody up there uh, did their job. I think what it did was showed uh, Randall and his family. In the end, it came down to Sarah. Sarah was just scared to death that uh, the government would not keep its part of the bargain. And she just weeped and weeped, but uh, we were able step by step to show her that these guys, Maybe never again, but these guys meant what they said, and they kept their word, and uh, they followed. By the way, he told me to give you guys a salute. He said you knew what that is. Thank you. I gave him your letter this morning, and it helped out a lot. These guys wrote a letter that said the battle was in the courts, not up here on top of the hill. When we first got down there this morning, we couldn't even get, they wouldn't let us in the door. The door was again bolted, and they said, no, Bo, you're going to stay outside. We're not going to come out for another 10 days. And uh, I thought, gee whiz, here we go again. But uh, I slipped them your letter through the door. They read your letter, and uh, we began to talk. So you guys on the vigil, I really want to give you a salute because you kept the faith. And you didn't do things that made the situation worse. You prayed, I believe. Did you not? And you see, now all we got to do is pray that gold will fall from the sky. So far, we've gotten everything we've asked for. Literally. So if you got any questions, then find what do you, maybe I can anticipate the question. Where the, the girls? All right, the girls. Uh, we we made a pledge that we would stay uh, with the parts that we all came out together. Uh, they came out. We all came out holding hands. There were there was no search. There was no handcuffs. We all walked down uh, that mountain together. Randall was carrying uh, Elisheba and holding my hand. And right behind us uh, was Jack McLam uh, with Rachel and with Sarah holding their hands. And we got down, and then, of course, they, uh, he was had been shot in the shoulder, even though, literally, uh, he was healed. It, I've never seen a bullet wound like that. And so they, were, they, have to, they checked out the baby medically to see if it was dehydrated or anything. It was not. They uh, put Randall uh, on the bird, and they're flying him right straight to Boise. You see, you got 23 people on the grand jury. When those daughters go in to testify to what happened to their mom, that was a very large bullet that went through that window. And when they testify... Well, as it can be seen here, there was a lot of media, and one aspect of this is, is over for a lot of people in the uh, Northwest, and indeed all across the United States. It's the beginning of a whole new chapter. If this doesn't flip on some switches, turn on some lights, then uh, I don't know what will. But I know one thing. For folks here in the Northwest, it has certainly uh, been a uh, trying 11 days. Uh, people are still angry. Uh, people are upset. Uh, and we must find a way to stop this type of thing from happening again. Uh, whatever it takes, we've got to find a way to stop this. I would like to thank you for watching this, and uh, in closing, please uh, show this to your friends and neighbors, and uh, discuss it together. Uh, and to comment would be superfluous.
without the support of these hundreds of protesters and hundreds of concerned citizens and people that are very angry with the federal government without their support day in and day out through the cold nights and the 